I don't actually enjoy doing them because they, they drive me insane doing them, but I, I get pleasure when I finish them. I have to make sure that I'm as still as possible and everything's got to be quiet. I don't have any music around me, nobody around me, just, just tranquility. It's the process of holding your breath and working between your heartbeat and making tools so microscopically small that once you use the tools you have to make more tools because they just don't last. You have to go smaller and smaller and smaller all the time. Your body's got to be still because you see you have to work between your heartbeat because your pulse, as you know, there's a pulse in your finger and, and it starts to move like that. So what you, you have to do is sort of squeeze your fingers together and then wait for the pulse to stop. And then you start to create the work. And to paint it, you know, that's a hard bit because you have to use a hair from a fly. Or I may pluck out a very, very fine eyelash from the corner of my eye and make a little paintbrush out of that. School was a bit miserable for me, so I'd always find a way to abscond from school now and again. And now I discovered what I had is when I happened to be in the back garden one time hiding, <laughs> hiding from my mum because I'd just run away from school, didn't want to get caught actually. So. And being a, a kid, you just fall into a little fantasy world, you know, and I kept thinking that if I make some houses for the ants, they'll all move in. So I set about making houses for ants. How I'd done that, I got my dad's razor blade, broke a piece of the razor blade off, picked up some splinters of wood and started to slice the splinters and started to build these tiny houses for ants. It was just something I was doing naturally. I didn't think it was a gift, I'm just thinking to myself, if I don't build these houses, all the ants are going to be homeless. So then I got carried away, I made, the houses were, how I made them, sorry, I sliced the splinters and made little grooves and pushed them together, they're on friction, you know. And then there's a little doorway there, I left the doorways and some windows, and then I got some clear uh, plastic paper like, and then sort of cut out little squares and made the windows and the doors. Then I got carried away and I thought the ants need furniture. So I thought, I might as well make some furniture now. So same principle, slicing up little bits of wood and pushing them together. It was just, like I said, it was a natural gift. So it, it became a journey from there. That was my frontier to create the smallest sculptures in history. <laughs>